Hello galaxy beings, both human and non. My name is Joey, and I'm the Star Wars guy of the Animated Apparel's YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so you can be up to date on all of our newest videos. Today, I'll be talking about the differences between the Galactic Republic's Clone Trooper armor and the Galactic Empire's Stormtrooper armor. We'll be talking briefly about the materials used to make the armor and its benefits, the key differences between each armor technically, and then my personal conclusion of the best armor based on what we know in both canon and legends. So now that you know the battle plan, let's throw it in light speed. Both clone and stormtroopers use a material in their armor called plastoid, and plastoid was a fairly inexpensive material to manufacture. And the plastoid was used throughout the galaxy, not only in armor, but it was also used in building structure and even some body prosthetic parts. Plastoid was meant to disperse the kinetic energy of enemy fire and distribute it throughout the armor. Plastoid armor was resilient to projectile weapons and slugs. Smaller rounds could be easily shrugged off, but larger projectiles would leave troopers with severe bruises, cracked ribs, and bones but was not fatal to the trooper unless it was hit in a spot that was not covered by the plastoid. Such is where like the armor would meet on the trooper's body uh, and it would hit the underglove of the armor uh, that was black and under each of the suits. And last but not least, the materials could easily disperse off common civilian guns. However, it was a lot more fatal against military grade weaponry. So how could one be better than the other if they're made out of the same material? Let's talk about the technology that was in the suits and the helmet. Clone Trooper Armor had a life support system, a tracking device for monitoring troop movement and display screens, which was built into the helmet's viewplate. The helmet also contained a comm link and a comm link antenna, and it was located in the helmet's crest. And Clone Troopers could have attachments on their helmets, such as micro binoculars or range binders. So since the Stormtrooper Armor was kind of an upgrade, um, we can say that the Stormtrooper armor had all of these features, but a little bit extra. Some of the upgrades the helmet got was a broadband communication antenna powered by a single powered cell. A built-in heads-up display also provided targeting diagnosis, power levels, and environmental readings at the corner of the wearer's eyesight. And one could easily access data of various military subjects and civilian organizations on the helmet's display. One of the other upgrades that the helmet got was a visual and audio recorder. Um, that would track troops while they were out on battles. And at the end of every battle and mission, the data could be downloaded and ISB agents could scrub through it in order to keep insubordinate troopers in line. So we know that they were both made out of the same material, but can we really call the Stormtrooper armor the better armor, even though it was considered the upgrade? That part's a little hard to answer, and it's never really directly talked about in canon or legends, but I think we can maybe piggyback off of the idea that Captain Rex had. He left the armor pretty much a one-star review. This garbage is nothing like clone armor. Basically to our friend Captain Rex, the Stormtrooper armor is just garbage compared to the Clone Trooper armor. I would never be on their side or wear that junk armor. And that's a first-hand remark coming from a trooper that wore both Stormtrooper and Clone Trooper armor. Oh, I'm proud of my service, but I really hate this armor. So, Captain Rex says it's bad armor. Can we go off that? Let's just take a lot more things into perspective. Let's look at numbers. There were only about 6.2 at most million clones produced and grown uh, during the Clone Wars. And that is far less than I personally would have guessed, especially when we think about a war that took place galaxy-wide. It's estimated that there were at least 342.5 million troopers in the Stormtrooper Corps. That's over 50 times more troopers, Stormtroopers, than there were clone troopers. Okay, yeah, so there were more troopers. Does that matter? Uh, yes, when we think about budgeting, quality over quantity, it really shows in the Empire's history and rhythm of doing things. You see, the Empire is all about big numbers and overpowering your enemies with huge, massive machinery and just blowing you to smithereens. And with these big, massive machines come some cuts. And we see that in the military, such as the TIE Fighters. They didn't have any kind of protective shielding. They really didn't have any kind of shielding at all. They're basically just metal shells that were vacuum sealed and had some cannons and an engine on it. We can draw the line from TIE Fighters to Stormtroopers when it comes to the protection of the troops considering the amount of troops they had. And that's why we see stormtroopers in the TVs and movies 
go down with basically one shot because I don't think the armor was as resilient as the clone trooper armor. It's a lot more common that we see a clone trooper get shot uh, once, twice, even three times going down and then just spending a little bit of time in a medical bay or back to tank and getting back up for the fight. So in my opinion, I think the clone troopers were probably better off armor wise. Um, and that's because I think the Republic probably took a lot more time in caring for these troops considering that it took a lot longer to grow a trooper, even with speed growth, than it was to hire a trooper like stormtroopers or even to manufacture a droid such as the confederate of independent systems so hashtag clone lives matter this armor doesn't protect you from anything well i told you so that concludes today's episode if you like this type of video where i take two similar things in the star wars galaxy and compare them and give you my personal take on it and a little bit of background then make sure you like this video subscribe and leave a comment below about what you think I should compare in the next video or I should talk about in the Star Wars Galaxy. And last but not least, if you want to get some really awesome geek type merch, hats, shirts, sweaters, you got a wallet, then make sure you head over to the Animated Apparel's website and use the code Joey and you'll get 10% off your next purchases. So I'll see y'all in the next Animated Apparel Star Wars YouTube video. And remember, the Force will be with us all.